Hello to another Gran Canaria video. This is now chronological, this was my first day in Gran Canaria. On the right of me at the beginning there was Mas Palomas Water Park, which I never got to. And this is a video about what I would think of as Mas Palomas' equivalent to Cap Formentor in Mallorca, for example. It is the iconic local ride that you do when you just want to go up for the morning or um, you've got other things to do, you want a recovery day. It's beautiful, it's nice smooth tarmac, and it is all done within 20 miles or something. There's one climb, uh, and that's it. So this is called Ayaguerdes, I think. I'm going to say Ayaguerdes from now on. There may be a sh sound that I should be saying, and I'm not, and I apologise. That was the village ahead of me there. You could probably see down the valley uh, in white. And yeah, you ride out in this valley, and it's like false flat for five or six miles, I think. Um, sort of one to three percent as you just sort of go inland and thus slowly uphill. Lovely scenery. It's very, uh, it's very grand. The camera can't quite capture the um, grand nature of the environment you're in, but it's lovely. It's a lovely smooth road, and then at the end of it is this climb, which comes out at just under four kilometers, 220 meters of elevation, so it's like five and a half percent average. Now, if you were paying attention to the profile, if that's the sort of thing that interests you, you may have noticed that in the middle, there's a, a flat to downhill section. Um, and obviously that means that actually most of the time you're going uphill, it's much steeper than five and a half percent. And I, you know, you know how I get snotty about five percent climbs. What's the point of them? Um, this is like a proper climb the whole time you're doing it. I would guess it's eight to 10% average when you're climbing. And it's just that there's this, this big dip in the middle. Um, absolute numpty that I am. I had done no research whatsoever on this, apart from seeing uh, that it was good. Piglet recommended it to me. On this hairpin here is where the climb itself starts. And I think like the first bit is to um, climb up into the village. And there's this lovely twisty bit um, that's relatively steep to begin with. Then you take a left turn um, and then you go down the sort of descent slash flat bit and then it's slightly longer, um, less twisty climb. When I was producing this video, by the way, it was a treat in Garmin Verb to see the ride profile, like the segment profile, the way it looks on the left there. Because in Wales, how often is it that I show you a segment profile that's a straight line? Or if not a straight line, it's got one bend in it, and I'm like, oh, look, this has a hairpin. They are everywhere here. They they do not care for straight roads in Gran Canaria, and uh, and that's great. So yeah, you get, get up into the village, and you eventually there was a left turn, because if you keep going on this road, you end up at a reservoir, and it's a dead end. Makes sense. We want to go all the way up to the top of the ridge line that was on the left, and then come back down uh, along the ridge, which is cool. The fact that I'd done no research whatsoever meant I had no idea how long the climb was. But I knew it was decent. Um, like I say, Piglet had recommended it to me as a really nice place to come. My dad had done it once uh, when he was here last, which was quite a while ago, um, seven years maybe. So he had a vague memory of it, he just knew that it was really nice. So I wasn't sure how I was pacing this. And sort of for the whole week in Gran Canaria, I wasn't actually doing full gas efforts during which I was trying to set like a personal best up these climbs. Obviously it's all a personal best because I've only done them the one time, but I wasn't trying to get on Strava leaderboards, not that I would have had a chance in hell here. I was just going with a view to, you know, going hard all week, but not overdoing it. So I had no idea how to pace this. Sometimes you'd think I was going absurdly full gas and I'm holding over 400 watts for ages. Sometimes I'm doing 250 and it looks like I'm being conservative. Truth is, I was just kind of riding it without a clue. And to be fair, it's pretty magnificent to just ride for the sake of riding it, right? It's, it's no bad thing to not be holding myself constantly accountable and that's something something I've had a bit of a bee in my bonnet about uh, of late is the idea that we should we should all be striving towards a goal. Ah, sod all that. Just every time you go on your bike, have fun and you've achieved everything that anyone who's not professional needs to. Anyone who tells you different is probably trying to sell you something. I got a bit confused at this point though because I really didn't realise it was so long downhill and flat and I wasn't 
quite sure if I was even on the right climb anymore. I was going to my dad. Should we have turned left there? Is the climb over? Surely the climb's not over. And I kind of slack off. So if I was going for a really fast time, I probably lost anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds here by not capitalizing on the descent. I'd just kind of cruise and chill, which is no stress at all. Even if I'd been 30 seconds faster, it still would have been an unremarkable time. And otherwise it was probably a full gas effort. And like I say, I wasn't um, sort of measuring my self-worth by how I did on this climb. So it doesn't need to be a stress. Um, and I think it's somewhere around here that I decided, no, no, start, start going hard. You are on the right climb. Go hard again. So this was day one and we'd um, arrived on day zero, if you like, uh, to an incredibly cloudy island that was all hazy with Saharan sand. So it looked a bit post-apocalyptic, all um, red skies and you couldn't see very far. Uh, and it was very, very windy. Uh, I guess that's what blew the sand over. And there was still some residual wind here today. And I was a little bit uh, nervous about that because I was on a higher bike with deep section wheels. So I was feeling the crosswinds a lot more, which is something I'll come back to uh, towards the end of this video. We were out in the afternoon because in the morning I'd been to pick up the bikes uh, and we'd already had a catastrophe because um, the shop had misunderstood my dad's request for two e-bikes and they'd hired completely the wrong ones. They were like urban commuter bikes um, for him and my mum. They managed to sort one, but they were still in the process of trying to sort the other. It was all, all a bit of a shit show. Mine was fine. So my dad also forgot his helmet, which was not ideal. And it was a morning that had felt really disorganized, but we wanted to get out after lunch. It was roasting hot. I think it's like 28 or 29 degrees, which to me coming from England and two degrees was, was crazy. So it was a bit of a strange one. My bike was a Cannondale Super 6 Evo. I think like a 2022 or 2023 model. It had Ultegra Di2, which obviously is what I've got on my bike here. So I was used to that. Um, but it was, it's more aerodynamic than my bike here. It's very flat bars, deep section wheels, etc. It's disc brake, so it's heavier. Um, and obviously the braking performance is different, which was strange. And most significantly, the brakes are configured the reverse way to my British bike. So I'm used to my right hand pulling the front brake and having most of the stopping power. Of course, that's not true on this higher bike. And logically, I knew that. Not my first rodeo with European hire bikes. In my head, that was fine. And when I was just cruising along, braking, that's fine. I'm doing most of my stopping with my left hand. Later on, you'll see that you can't override muscle memory when you need to stop quickly. And I have a very near miss with that. But here we are, sort of halfway through the climb, on the, the longer, not so steep bit, the second half. Still enjoying these lovely hairpins. And there's something about riding hairpins that you just have to get used to that they obviously have a differential grade because they're designed to cut off um, steep parts maybe. So inside is, is steeper than the outside, but also it tends to be shallow going into the hairpin, steep going round it and shallow coming out potentially if you take the inside a line. And something I struggle with at first is I get really unnatural with coming into it, then getting out the saddle for the steep bit, then getting back in the saddle. And I think you lose a lot of power in transfer doing that. You know, you, you're off balance a lot of the time. It's just unnatural. So that's fine. Almost by the top of this climb, there's so many hairpins that I've learned my lesson and I've stopped doing that and it becomes natural for the rest of the time. But um, it's something you just don't think about that much in the UK. And you know, in, in the UK, or sorry, in, in Europe, people talk about, oh, take the outside line, flatten off the hairpin, you go further, but you can carry more momentum through. And in the UK, I often say that's nonsense. Most of the hairpins I ride in the UK, one, there's no way you can take the outside line. And two, there's no flattening any of them. They're absurdly steep, whichever angle you take. It's not so true here. It is um, a really useful skill, depending on how bold you are for going basically into a blind corner on the wrong side of the road. Um, this road's nice and quiet, so it wasn't too much of a problem. So 
I was starting to think, surely I'm, I'm somewhere near the top. I'm still doing punts of 400 plus watts, which, um, as it turns out, this, this climb's, you know, over 10 minutes long for, for the vast majority of mortal cyclists. And I can't do punts of over 400 watts for a 10 minute climb. But I'd done a little bit of a taper coming into this holiday. Not loads of one, but a little bit of a taper. And then, you know new bike sun on my back legs fresh as can be you almost can't stop yourself just going for it can you maybe that's just me but i i didn't pace this at all i just wanted to ride to feel uh, and have a laugh and then passing cyclists like i have done here you learn uh, well i i learned quite quickly that i have a bit of ego you know i want to pass them and i want to look good i want to look like it's easy while zooming past but i can't cope with being that cyclist who passes you and then slows down that's absurd it, it, it annoys me so that at least spurs me on to the next hairpin i think if i pass them at that pace i have to keep going at that pace all the way till i'm out of sight for them um which is good actually it's a good motivator because otherwise i'm the sort of person who might have been chilling out a bit here might have been sitting up a little bit the view back down the valley, by the way, is magnificent. It's really beautiful. It's landscape unlike anything I've seen. It's almost beautiful in a... I don't want to say bleak, but you know what I mean. It's its not lush like Wales is. It's um, stark, rocky, volcanic sort of landscape. It's really rugged. It could be Arizona or, the, you know, classic Wild West sort of um, locations. Really stunning. And... And even though I'm going really hard here, I was enjoying that. I was um, still taking the opportunity. I obviously didn't film my dad behind me, um, but he's on his e-bike there right next to me. And he had a nightmare when we got to the top of this hill. Um, we were chatting to a, an English couple who were up there, a really nice couple at the viewpoint. And my dad said, oh, do you want me to take a photo of you while you're here? And he put his phone down but just like on a rock um, and I didn't realise and we cycled off and he just left it there so when we got back to the villa he realised he'd lost his phone went out to get it and it was gone I was still out on my bike at this point so Rhiannon was texting me telling me what was going on it was all bad his bank cards were in there and stuff when I got back to the villa Rhiannon said before you cancel your bank cards why didn't you do on Android you can do find my phone through Google and that located it as being at the bike shop that we'd hired the bikes from. It turns out this couple had remembered where we said we hired the bikes and they'd gone and dropped it off for them, which was really nice. So I think they were called Stuart and Rebecca. I think I'm getting those names right. Lovely people. Saved our holiday. Would have been pretty catastrophic if they hadn't done that. Would have been pretty bad. So yeah, thank you very much. By this point, it's fair to say that I'm struggling and I was just hoping that I could see the end. I was really, um, yeah on my limit but I'd really enjoyed the climb I was just thinking it wasn't meant to be a massive one and also this was meant to be a relatively easy day just a leg spinner to get me warmed up we've got back to back big days planned down the line so um, I was hoping it'd come to an end soon because probably I'd already spent more matches than I should have but also who cares who cares I'm there to have fun it's not often that you get to be on holiday in such a beautiful place so yeah, I thought I'll spend every match I fancy as long as I as long as I'm enjoying it. And then just here, you can probably see that there's a viewpoint ahead, uh, just as I'm getting up to it. So there you go, pretty much climb over. I slack off a little bit too early, which you'll see on the analysis in a sec. But I averaged 340 watts for the duration, even with me messing up, and I did it in 12 minutes 19, which I was perfectly happy with. That's a, a decent effort. Then at the top here, I actually do remember to turn Maria camera on for just a sec, which is good because you can see a little bit of the descent. It's a lovely sort of ride along the ridge line. It's not sharp hairpins coming down the other way. It's a little, um, I guess like sweeping corners, gentle descent, which is really cool, lovely to ride. And I was just having fun going through it. If I was on my own bike, I probably would have been faster. Um, I'm not getting into discs versus rims. I didn't notice any difference in braking whatsoever. They both stopped me perfectly well. But I did notice um, 
you'll see in a sec that I come into a corner a little too hot, it's just a little tighter than the rest. Um, and muscle memory, I pull the right brake and I immediately kick my rear wheel out. Here it is. My dad sees that, panics, does exactly the same as me. And that edge next to us isn't, you know, we probably wouldn't have died, but it wasn't a nice thing to have the prospect of falling down. That shook me up a little bit. Here's just, you can see how far the ride is. It's only 20 miles uh, from my dad's. I went and did some other stuff after, so I didn't include mine. But yeah, that, that just made me a bit nervous for the whole rest of the holiday, I thought, for me. I don't really care about going that fast, so let's just sit up, enjoy going hard up the climbs, and chill out, down them, and um, who cares if I look like a granny. Right, thank you very much for watching guys, this was Ayagueras Climb. <laughs>